Hi, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about this video because I found these amazing vintage science encyclopedias when I was thrift shopping with my mom this past week when she was visiting. So I picked up several of them for you and I kept a few for myself. So these are in my Etsy shop. I'm going to flip through them and then this video is also... Um, 10 ways that you can use these in your junk journals and I'm going to actually show you um, how they look in how they look in a junk journal and stuff like that so let's start with that and then I'll show you which ones are available that way if you're not interested whoa I'm dropping them off that way if you're not interested in purchasing one you still get all of the tips okay so the first tip is to use pieces of the book as a journal card. So I'm going to show you, for example, one of the ones I kept. And these, I believe, are from 19, I want to say 70-ish. Yep, 1963. And then the revised edition, this is the 1970 edition. So they have lots of illustrations. The paper feels really nice, you know, kind of that vintage thick feel to it. So this is one that I kept. And um, let me make sure my focus is in here try to okay um, so the first thing is to make journal cards out of them so I did that I thought I had everything in order over here okay so here's an example um, I took the entry for violet and then I stitched it onto some graph paper so you can write on the back if you don't have a sewing machine you can glue and it just looks really pretty as a journal card I'm gonna pull out the junk journal I'm using I'm still working on this one that Shelby sent me she is she the journal is getting very chunky and so as you see you can slip them into pockets or clip them on pages like that so I'm just gonna slip this one right in here I really like how that looks peeking above the little tags that I have in here so that is the first thing when you're going through the book just look for entries that catch your eye that have really pretty um, like this bird the willet you could cut that out and back it with scrapbook paper coffee dyed paper or something like that make a beautiful journal card Here's those things to do, making a wildflower collection. You could cut this out and back it with coffee dyed paper and make a huge journal card that would look great in one of the bigger journals. So that's my first tip. My second tip is to make tuck spots. And I did that with this little bird, the Vireo. Whoop, and I'm dropping stuff again. <laughs> so here we go, cute little tuck spot. I just cut out part of this entry here and I rounded the corner and I just did a little stitching because I'm going to glue this on a page and glue grabs really well to stitching I found and then I just um, inked it so let me show you how that looks in my journal and my plan was to have it on um, the left side of the page <laughs> find something okay like here or I guess enough to be on the left side because I'm putting it on the right side on the left side of the right page people I'm confused okay and so then I'm just gonna take my glue um, I usually prefer hot glue I say that all the time but this Elmer's extreme works pretty well and then I'm just gonna make a little tuck spot right here and then I can um, <laughs> you can read my little entries here how I use my junk journal you can stick um, like an index card or little tuck little tickets or something in the tuck spot so um, you just, again, same thing as with the journal cards, you're just gonna look and find a little image that you like, um, maybe this, you know, with the earth and the weather, if you're doing more of a steampunk journal, here's like mountains, that would be really pretty in a nature journal. And then I like to round one of the corners, you don't have to, just cut it out and glue it on. So the next one, oh boy, you will have my notes here, you can read all of them ahead of time and not watch. Okay, so my next one is a bookmark. This one is super, super simple. You know how sometimes when you get a book from the library, you find an old book, there's just a little cutout from like a newspaper or a book that is being used as a bookmark. So I thought this would be really interesting. This is the Desert Pansy, and it's a little bit about it. I just cut it out. I didn't ink it. I didn't sew. I didn't do anything because I thought it looked um, natural, organic, as in it's just cut right out of the book so my idea with that and I didn't even back it with anything so you can see like it came out of a book I thought it just looked really neat and then you can just like um, find a page and that you think needs a bookmark and just 
put it right in there. You don't even have to clip it. We made a great bookmark. So um, same thing. Look for things that are a little bit longer. So um, maybe, uh, let's see. Making scales for weighing materials. So you could cut this, just cut it out and slip it right in. Or here, um, here's some yucca plants. And you could just cut this, slice it right out and put it right in your journal. So that's another idea. And then um, my next idea is using the book pages as journal pages. So here I just ripped one of the pages out and I just folded it in half. And then this would be actually sewing it into the signature of your book. Or you could just like... Um, you know, tuck it in somewhere like that if, if you wanted to pull it out and read it or when you're making a journal, you could just like sew it right into the signature. So that's an idea as well. And then my next idea is making tabs. And what's really neat about making tabs for journals is you don't have to have any pictures. There's really neat text and the paper looks amazing. So I just cut these rectangles out and I folded them in half and I inked the pages and I'll just staple them onto my journal. So I just find a page that I think um, could use a tab, um, like this one here, and then I'm just going to place it, doesn't matter where, and then staple it on. And then we have a tab there, and then I'm gonna flip a little further, find another page that I want a tab on, and then I'm just gonna put it on and staple it. So you can make lots and lots of tabs and a great way to use the text in these books um, after you've used all the pretty images. Okay, the next idea is backgrounds. And so I made this to show you what I mean. This is one of my journal cards for my In My Dreams digital kit and you can get that on my shop. But I just used a, some text. There are no pictures, just some text. And I just kind of glued it right to the middle. I stitched it on. Um, and I uh, ripped around it, and this looks really, really neat on a journal page um, or clipped. I'm gonna just glue this right into my journal, and it just brings a lot of texture. This also looks absolutely amazing on the cover of a journal. I do this a lot. This is definitely something I do for the cover of a journal, and you could add like a little sentiment. Like I'm gonna use my own handwriting here, and I'm just going to write dream. I think it's really great to add touches of our own handwriting because it's a part of who we are. So I just wrote dream, and so that's a nice little page right there. And if you wanted it even simpler, I, I think, isn't that zebra cute? Um, I just ripped him out of the book and I inked it. And then this makes a great background for a page as well. And you could glue it right down or you can um, clip it, but I am going to glue and the garden zinnias, it's so pretty on the back here. Maybe I wouldn't have glued it down if I hadn't started. That way we could see the zinnias as well, but oh well. All right, and so we're just gonna make that the background of this page. So that is a great way to use these, just adding these vintage touches to your journals. The next idea is making collages or snippets or something like that with um, them. And this is great for those little pieces that have interest, but and here you're talking about negative temperature and um, zero divided by zero, uses of the concept zero. It might not be exactly what you're doing, like a botanical journal. It might not be about flowers or something, but it's still really neat. And so we're just going to build up a little bit of a, let's just find a page in our journal. Um, and we're just going to, I have some scrapbook paper that I ripped here and I'm just going to glue that down first and I'm going to take a little bit of black ink and ink the edge of this ripped page. All right, let's see if we can do this. And you can stitch it as well. And I'm just gonna kind of layer that up. And then I also grabbed a little bit of fabric and we're gonna add some fabric. I think we'll use some wet glue for that, but we're gonna add a little bit of fabric somewhere. 
And see, now we're turning it into more of a feminine bot botanical or shabby chic. And it's still, it's about negative temperatures and below zero. So that's really awesome way. I have a little bit of white um, lace here as well. So I've just created a collage or a snippet in my journal. And um, I use some of that vintage paper, but yet, you know, I'm using all the little bits up. And so I have another one. We're gonna just do a second one so you can see how they can all be just a little bit different. Find another blank page in my journal. And I'm gonna just glue it down in a little bit of scrapbook paper. And a little bit of fabric. I just have the same fabric. But you could use, obviously you could use different fabric and then I have a little bit of um, some pretty pink lace here. I'm not even really thinking that hard about the placement. I kind of like to go with an organic look like whatever my brain says just kind of go with it. I really need hot glue for stuff like this <laughs> but it will it will stick down if I let it dry. So I've just kind of made a collage background and then you could add a flower or a button or something like that as well to finish it up. So that is a wonderful idea. Let's move on. The next idea I have is to make envelopes with the pages and I like to do them super simple. How cute would this be for a garden journal? There's lettuce and all I did was fold the page in not quite thirds but you get what I mean. I stitched, but you could glue two sides. You make a nice little pocket. I put in a little piece of graph paper for journaling. And then you just find a page and find a little paper clip, which I didn't bring with me, but just paper clip it on. And I think I am just going to staple it on right here. Make, and that way I have a tuck spot and then I can well, that was not the smartest thing I've ever done, people. But, <laughs> oh my goodness. That's why I'm going to leave this on the film because you need to see, I don't always get it right. Yeah, I'm like, oh yay, I can staple it in and then I can't pull the paper out. So we will not do that. But these are drunk journals. So the staple holes, they just look, they add, they add texture and meaning. <laughs> so just paper clip it in there and we'll be good. All right, so there is that on, on making envelopes. My other idea is happy mail. And what I mean by that is if you're sending, um, if you have these books, you can pull a couple of pages out and put it in happy mail that you're sending to a fellow journal friend or something like, that. oh wow, look at that page, that's amazing. Uh, or fellow journal friend or something like that and share the wealth. And my last idea is making punch outs or die cuts. And so I just used a couple of different punches and I just punched out um, some different either words or different things like that. And then they're really, really fun to um, find. Let's see, where's my glue stick? Ugh. Just kind of glue in places in your journals and build up. Um, you can kind of add these with the collaging as well. That would be fun. Or just, you know, find little places to glue them on. Adds vintage character. Ugh. Here we go. So I like all of those ideas. Please let me know down below if you have more ideas on how to use these or what your favorite idea that I said was. So now I am going to show you the books I got. All right, um, my phone doesn't have much space left on it, so let's see if we can do this quickly. But, oh, that's not one of them, that's, okay, here we go. So I'm going to list them by the number on Etsy. So I'm just gonna flip through them, but you see this is 18. And this one, I haven't taken anything out of these, but I'm gonna just flip through some of the pages so you can see, look at these flowers. Oh, they're so pretty. Lots of nature stuff. There's, yeah, look at, there's some more nature in this one. There's some tools and some, oh, that, look at that brown thrasher. Oh my goodness, makes me wanna keep it. Mushrooms, guys, mushrooms. But I'm not keeping them. I chose, here's some little vintage people. 
I chose which one I wanted and which ones I wanted to share, and these are the ones I'm sharing. So this is 18, and then this is 17. So let's see a couple of the pictures from here. Look at the sunflower, how beautiful. Um, sumac. I love the little vintage people, the illustrations. Here's a stork and some geraniums. There's strawberries. There's science stuff. Look at the little squirrels. Oh my goodness, so cute. Anyway, I didn't look through every page, so now I'm like, oh, these are so neat. There's space stuff. So that's 17, and then here's 15. I'll try to go a little faster. There's a sapsucker bird. Some fish. Roots and rodents. Rhubarb and rice. Rhinoceros. There's reptiles. The red bud. Look at that cute little boy doing a science experiment. There's some under the sea stuff. There's um, raspberries and ravens and kangaroo rats. More seed seeds and things like that. So totally, totally awesome. And then here is number nine. There's the earth. Ibex and it, ibis. Hyacinth. Huckleberries, horse chestnuts, and horses. Look at these beautiful horses in here. Mountain holly. Here's a whole bunch of herbs. Look at those cute little boys playing, playing doctor there. Here's gems, trees, and look at that picture. How adorable is that? It's so cute. So that is number nine. Here is number five. There's deer and Charles Darwin, dahlias, daffodils, more flowers. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's making me want to keep all of them. <laughs> oh, like I said, I won't. Look at how beautiful. Coffee branch berries. Like I said, lots of science experiments. And here is number eight. Birds and berries and goats, news. Lots of different flowers, shapes, timelines and more flowers. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. Here's number 13. Um, pine cones, pigs, pigeons, <laughs> some underlining and stuff. I think that's always neat when you have vintage books to see what other people, look at these cute little vintage ladies. Look, look, looks like they're working science experiments and things. Petunias. More health things, lots of red peppers, pandas, pansies. So amazing. Possums. And then number two. Obviously, I did not have these in order. I hope you guys can see and my piles aren't getting too large. There's animals and plants and maps. Puffins. What else am I seeing here? I see space and more plants and more maps. Really pretty maps in here. Animals. Pottery. More maps. Oh, it's a beautiful map of Antarctica. Four. Roosters, chicory. Sweet cherries, chickadee. Looks like I saw some dolphins, maybe. Celery. Catnip. Oh, look at these cats. How cute. Looks like we have carnations and cardinals. I'm pointing out a lot of the flowers and, and animals. Look at these beautiful butterflies, just because that's what I'm drawn to, but there's so much in here that you can use besides that. Here is the number 12. Looks like there's diving. Look at the turtle and the fish. 
Mm, these symbols, these are really neat for background pages. I guess I'm going kind of fast now, but again, lots of the same stuff. More flowers. And then the last one, number six. And I just left this part for the end so that, you know, you didn't have to watch me flip through all these books if you were just here for the tips. But it's kind of easier to see the pages to know like which ones you want, like a couple of the things that are in it. So I hope that was helpful. Please let me know. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at these little uh, time capsules from history. They are about almost 50 years old by now. So that's pretty neat. So these are up on my Etsy shop. Just click the link below. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.